Okay, my friends, we're starting out laying down tonight. Okay, focusing on opening up the back body. First, let's rest the back body against the floor. Let's kind of smoosh the shoulder blades into the ground. Feel the chest puff open a little bit. Let's take some nice time to breathe. Mm. Connect to the breath. Connect to every different characteristic of the breath. Make sure it is a long breath. Try to make it also a deep breath. You're thinking of using all available space on the inhale. and completely cleaning out the lungs on the exhale. Take some time to breathe just like this. Feel free to arrange your body into any position that seems more comfortable, more blissful, where you can more fully release toward the floor. If your low back is feeling tense today, Okay, chances are, if you are a human, it is feeling tense today. You might put a slight bend in your knees and kind of knock them toward each other. And you'll feel that as your hips internally rotate, it peels open a little bit of space in your low back. And you might feel like you could allow that low back to release. You might even feel good to bend your elbows and flop your palms up to the ceiling and maybe scooch your shoulder blades slightly underneath your rib cage. And become aware of the movement of the diaphragm, the separation between the lungs and the abdomen. It's a sheet of muscle shaped kind of like a ball and on the inhale, it contracts and pulls down towards your hips, compressing your abdominal organs and puffing open your belly. And that's why we feel that big belly puff on the inhale. So embrace that. Embrace your big Buddha belly on the inhale. And on the exhale, the diaphragm uh, it uh, softens again and passively moves back up toward the lungs. But we take it a step further by contracting now the tissues of the belly, pulling them inward toward the spine, squeezing the diaphragm up further toward the lungs and pressing the air out even more with all the little muscles between the ribs. So there's really so much muscle involved in breathing. And when we breathe deeply and intentionally and skillfully in this way, we send a message to the nervous system that everything's okay, nervous system, let go. The muscles tend to lengthen and let go. And that massaging movement of the contraction and relaxation of all the muscles of your torso is really one of the best massages you can get. So feel your breath in your back. Feel the back body press into the floor with the inhale. Feel it recede from the floor on the exhale. And allow your awareness to drift outward from your breath to the rest of your body. What are you feeling? What parts of your body do you feel the most? What do you notice the most? You may notice that some parts feel tense, maybe congested, somehow just stuck in some places. But as you scan your body, do you notice there are places that feel strong and healthy and open? And 
Notice all of that equally. And let's keep this long, slow breath here. Let's keep this deep breath and awareness. And we'll start to move a little bit. So let's bend the knees, bring the feet in a bit closer toward the hips. Start off with some windshield wipers here. A gentle drop of the knees from side to side is all we need to get a little movement going in the hips. Okay, so nice and slow. Mostly just letting gravity take the knees down, side to side. So this is a great glute massage. If you're a runner, cyclist, you're feeling your glutes here. Great hip opener, gentle movement, and a great low back massage. So maybe start to activate this a little more, more actively drawing the knees downward. Active drawing downward. Just as much as feels right. Okay, following your instincts here, as you always do in your practice, right? You're always, you're always making sure to modify and take breaks if you need to. Okay, extend the knees point up, pause here. Shimmy your feet toward each other and put your feet together. We're gonna let the knees kind of drop outward and make a diamond shape, okay? Uh, Bada konasana, bound angle posture. So as much as you can, allow the knees to drop downward, but I still want you to put a gentle engagement, the most, just the tiniest engagement as the knees lift just 1% as much as they can toward the ceiling. So you're not stretching passively. And we'll start to move the arms here. So bend your elbows and reach for the floor or the wall behind you. Take a big breath in. And then exhale, draw your elbows down and reach towards your feet. So just getting some movement into the back body. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, pull your hands down. Okay. And if you have a lot more space than I do right now, you can take your arms out wide, kind of like snow angel arms. But I'm doing the space saving option right now. Okay, so feel this nice massage of your shoulder blade muscles, okay, on top of your shoulder blades against the floor. Some big muscles in your upper back, it kind of smooshed, and this is nice. And next time your arms are up, pause right there. Okay, and you might put a slight bend in your elbows if you like. I kind of enjoy more of an armpit opening experience here. So I like to point my elbows a little bit out to the side. So you kind of play with that. And then point your knees back up at the ceiling. Put your feet about hip width, maybe a little closer to your hips. As if you're about to come up into a bridge pose, okay? And as a matter of fact, we are. But we'll get a little bonus back massage out of it. Okay, so before you come up to bridge pose, put a little activation in your core, please, by moving your knees slightly inward toward each other. Okay, keep that engagement as we move. And we'll lift the hips high. You can think of inhaling up. And we'll drop the hips low, all the way down. Remember to keep your nose pointed up. And let's do that a few more times. Bring it up. And roll it down. Okay, so notice every time you come up, you get this kind of bonus back massage moment as your upper body gets kind of smooshed into the floor. And so I want you to kind of, kind of instinctively feel it out. If you kind of waggle your hips side to side, you can really massage into the, the meat of your upper back and your shoulders. So make sure it feels nice. And then just take several rounds. We'll call it back massage bridge. Let's start to make this movement a little more rolly. So intentionally rolling the spine up and placing it down very carefully. Also always aware of length in the spine, please. <laughs> Okay, next time you come up, let's just pause up here, hang out for this little back massage for a little while, maybe. Rocking the hips side to side. Okay, 
Okay, you can really get into your shoulders and use the floor to your advantage. So maybe stay here or maybe get a little stretch for the fronts of your shoulders and your chest by joining your hands underneath you, underneath your hips. And so make sure you find the right place for your feet, maybe closer, maybe further away, but maybe you even scoot your shoulder blades underneath you here and press down against the floor. I think of peeling your front body open. And let's breathe here. Just enjoy wherever you are. Remember to breathe. <laughs> Okay, gently pushing the floor, maybe even fiercely pushing the floor if that's something that feels right to you. So always finding your intensity level. One more big breath here. Release your hands if you join them. Slow motion, come down, please. Okay, try to roll your long spine down in extreme slow motion. Maybe take a couple breaths on the way down. All right, when your spine uh, fully lands, maybe take a few more windshield wipers here. Might get some cracks and cobbles from your low back. We might have adjusted things a little bit. All right, from here, your knees pointing up. Let's pause there and pull your knees in. Give yourself a hug here. You can grab knees, pull them in, maybe interlace fingers if that's appropriate. And of course, if you have a knee injury, always go for behind the knee so that you don't compress the knee joint. But press your shoulder blades to the floor here, squeeze yourself in, and see if you'd like to bring your chin closer to your knees. Now let's take one big exhale here, just curled up into this teeny, teeny ball. And inhale here, stretch out as long as you can be. Get nice and long. Reach through fingers, reach through toes. And exhale, pull it in again. Make that tiny shape. Pull on your ankles maybe. Then inhale to get long again. Again, big exhale. And pull it in. One more, bring it in. Hold and breathe. Maybe wrap your forearms around your knees and squeeze them a little closer. All right, as you're ready, tuck your hands behind your knees. Go ahead and rock yourself up. And then if you point your toes out to one side, we'll come to hands and knees. So I'll meet you there. Okay, I'd like to do some cat cows just to get a little bit more mobile in the spine. Okay, release any back tension. But let's stretch out our rests while we're here. So point all your fingers back at your knees, palm down. Remember to keep a little bend in your elbows. And if that's too much, you can do one hand or just back it out. You can just go back to normal hands. So inhale and cure. Elbows point back, pull your heart forward. Think of the belly button lifting at the same time. And with your exhale, push the floor away. Okay, cat cows, let's take a few more like that. Feels nice with that wrist stretch, opening up your forearms. But I want you to feel the range of the activity in the back here, okay? As you exhale and push the floor away, the back's getting stretched out. As you inhale and draw the heart forward, your back is moving that big heart forward. Okay, so we, by turns, are lengthening and strengthening all that tissue back there. Maybe one more round, just like that. Feels good in the wrists. All right, bring it back to a flat back. Go ahead and take your hands back to normal. And then just because we were there for a long time, maybe point your fingers back at you and get palm up for a moment. Palm up, and we can kind of roll around on that. OK, 
Okay, you can actually put quite a lot of pressure into the hands here. So um, feel free to experiment. Just make sure it feels good. That's your, that's your clue. <laughs> if it feels good, it probably is. Okay, back to normal hands. Tuck your toes. Find a down dog. Walk it out here. This is our liberal down dog, our first down dog of the practice. So we're just kind of noting any kind of tension in the backs of the legs. And down dog can, um, for some folks, it's not super comfortable. So you can always bend your knees more or just come down to your knees. Always substitute if that's more appropriate. Let's put some good roll around in the shoulders. And make sure we roll in both ways. All right, and then as you're ready, walk your hands back to your feet. Put a good bend in your knees here, really generous bend so that your belly is really close to your thighs. And let your head hang. And we'll just take the luxury of hanging here for a little while. Okay, maybe swaying. I like to sway into one leg at a time. And I find that just by that gentle activation side to side, it helps the backs of the legs let go a little bit. Maybe grab your elbows here and just feel your upper body hanging as just completely dead weight, your head especially heavy in your neck. Okay, allow each breath to lengthen your low back and any tense places in your back, okay? I'm gonna roll it up. So release your elbows if you grab them, press into your heels, inhale and stack yourself up. Okay, curl your heart up and open maybe. Maybe reach up nice and tall. Okay, as you exhale, could you roll it all the way back down, hinging at your hips, bending your knees, allow your head to fall. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, push into your heels. Think of unrolling your heart upward. And exhale, hinge and roll it all the way back down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, roll it up. Exhale, roll it down. Palms are down here. We're walking it forward to our hands and knees, and I'll meet you here. Let's get the right knee up now, and we'll circle the, the hip out. So keep the hips level for now. Make sure the right hip stays just about level with the left, okay? And by limiting ourselves, we're kind of, uh, by not allowing ourselves to lift that right hip, we're using a different set of muscles, just getting that. Let's rewind this hip circle. And now let's open it up. So now allow yourself to stack the hip, open things up. And rewind it a few more times. Okay, and then keep the knee bent, point the toe up at the ceiling. And just like you're doing a cat cow, grip the mat with your hands, Pull your heart forward, but as you pull that heart forward, think of sending the right toe toward the back of your head. Remember to keep a slight lift in your belly button, okay? And as you exhale, pull that right knee into your nose. Reminds you of a cat cow, right? Inhaling here, heart pulls forward, right toe toward the back of your head. Exhaling, pull it in, push the floor. Again, inhale. And exhale. One more time, big breath in. Pull that heart forward and hold right here. Maybe tuck the back toes to give you a little bit more power. Okay, really pull the elbows inward, send the heart forward, lift that belly button. And maybe get that toe closer for this last breath. 
And then as you're ready, send that right knee forward and drop the foot outside your right hand. And let's roll our hips all around. Side to side, front to back here, just kind of opening up the hips now, that right hamstring and the left hip flexor and all the muscles around both hips. Make sure we rewind that. And then let's hang out a little bit in this lunge. Let's just kind of sink into this low lunge. Okay, low lunge is a good friend. It is so modifiable that there's bound to be one that feels just right for you. So I'll just run through some options. Um, feel free to take what you want and let the rest go. First of all, in your low lunge, make sure you're at least a little bit engaged in your legs. So if you tend to kind of like collapse into your hips and there's no engagement at all, um, you might notice that uh, they might have injuries over time. So we, we don't want to stretch passively. So as you allow the hips to sink, please also resist the floor a little bit with your legs, like you're trying to uh, move your feet together or push the floor away. So just find a little bit of strength there and notice how that feels in your hips. And then maybe you want to stay up on your hands here, but see if you can put a slight bend in your elbows and point the elbows at the back of the mat. You may even find yourself wanting to walk the right foot out to the right, maybe even pointing the toes to the right. Okay, that might be just the thing. Okay, maybe today one elbow comes down, maybe two. But wherever you are, see if you can let your head hang as you keep the neck really long. And allow yourself to check out your hips and make sure that the hips are level, which means you may find yourself having to move your hips a little over to the right because the left hip gets kind of low. Keep breathing here. Keep the legs a little bit resisting the floor. Anytime we lengthen a tissue, it's in our best interest to keep it a little bit active. Okay, that way we don't injure. Okay, feel all the muscles in the back body releasing from the tailbone all the way up to the top of the head. And while we're here, we may as well get one of my favorite little quad stretches. So look over to your right here. And if you're on your elbows or your hands, same thing. You can just stay with, on that elbow or that hand. Look to the right, and then you can gently press the right knee away as you slowly twist to look over that right shoulder. We'll take a couple breaths here. And then we'll start to curl this left heel in toward the hamstring. So flex that left foot, curl the heel in toward the hamstring, and then let it go. And then let's do it again. Curl it in, let it go. Curl it in, and let it go. Okay, this time curl it in and keep it. So curl it in, hold. See if you can grab the top of your foot here with your right hand. So right hand can reach back, grab that left foot and gently pull it in so that the heel comes towards your glute. Uh, nothing painful. So you're feeling the front of your thigh lengthening, your quadriceps muscles. So maybe kind of roll side to side on the top of the kneecap. Not on the actual kneecap, but where the thigh meat attaches to your kneecap. Find the most tender spot there. And then flip your grip to the outside of the left ankle. Flex the ankle now and try to kick the foot away from you. So getting a big chest opening here. Keep breathing. 
I want to think of kicking that left foot away and kind of peeling up in the right chest. Remember your legs are still slightly resisting the floor. One more big breath here. And let's let that go. Release that left leg, let it go. Come back down in front with that right hand. Back up to your left hand if you were on your elbow. And let's, let's make a way back to hands and knees. So take your time coming back. Let's take the feet or the knees wide and the hands wide and just do some gentle circles here. Hip circles, shoulder circles. Kind of resetting all that tissue. Let's go the other way a few times. Okay, let's bring it back to hands and knees. And let's pick the left knee up now and circle it out. So left knee, circle. Try to keep the hips level at first and that will uh, oblige us to use a different musculature to move the hip. Okay, we're gonna explore using that. Let's reverse it, keep the hips level. And now allow yourself to pick up the hips. Circle big, big. Big, silly circles. And reverse it. And then next time the left toe points up at the ceiling, hold it there. Knees point back, okay? Just like we're doing a cat cow. Pull the heart forward on the inhale. Think of pulling that left toe toward the back of your head. Okay, keep the belly button lifting in toward the spine. And exhale, pull the left knee to your nose. Again, inhale, pull it heart forward, toe to your head. Exhale, back around. Again, big breath in. Big exhale. One more time, big breath in. And hold here, just enjoy it. It doesn't have to be strenuous. You can make it kind of a gentle shape, but continue to move your heart forward. Pull that toe towards your head. One more big breath here. And let it go. Go ahead and swing that left knee forward and plant it outside your left hand. So take a little time to circle the hips out here. Just gently moving them in every direction. And reverse it a few times. And then let's settle back in its center and find a low lunge that we can sink into. And we'll take some time here. Begin to activate your legs. So gentle resistance against the floor, okay? And notice when you give that little bit of activation, things actually will tend to release a little more easily. So any tension that you're feeling in the back of the left hamstring, resistance there might slowly melt away. Front of the right hip, okay, hip flexor, quadriceps, hopefully melting a little bit there too. And I just want you to kind of find how low you wanna go. So start to bend your elbows. Make sure they point more back than out and let your head hang. So make sure the neck is long. You can see your hips. Okay, is your right hip lower than your left? If it is, maybe move your hips more to the left. Level off the hips and see how that feels. Maybe you're out on your elbows today. Just breathe, okay? Feel the back body spreading up and this is a great relief for the low back, isn't it? What a wonderful release for the low back. So breathe into that. 
Breathe into the hips and the legs. Allow the shoulders to always move away from the ears here. And then let's start to think about maybe giving a little bit of a heart opening here. So maybe thinking about looking over to the left, taking the left hand to the inside of that left knee and give it a little press. So starting to kind of roll the left side of your uh, chest open to the ceiling, giving some awareness into that big space. And then what if we have been the right knee, pull the heel of the right foot towards your glute and then kick it away. Again, pull it in and kick it away. A couple more times. Hamstring curl, right? Okay, next time you pull it in, hold right there. See if you can grab the top of the foot. And it's kind of a good foot stretch. It feels good on the foot muscle on the top. Kind of pull it in towards your glute. Just go far enough. Okay, don't go too far. You'll hurt your quad. And then we'll roll around on the very bottom tissues of the quadriceps. What a great massage from the floor. Thank you, floor. So find the most tender spot. And then see if you want to spend a little extra time there. Okay. While you're spending some extra time in that spot, maybe switch your grip to the outside of that uh, ankle and flex the foot and start to kick it away from you. Peeling open your left chest even more. Mm, breathe here. Find places your body might be resisting and places that might be really enjoying and releasing here. One more big breath. Mm. Go ahead and release that as you're ready. <laughs> All hands back in front. And make your way back to hands and knees, please. No hurry, you have time. Take the knees wide, take the hands wide. Let's take some more circles, tabletop circles. Notice if you have crackles and popples where they are. Okay, it's always good information. And then as you're ready, bring your knees back together. And find a little child's pose, okay? Settle down, get nice and low. Let your head come down. Let your belly be really close to your thighs. And just find a, a really grounded feeling here. Feel gravity pulling you down. Allow your body weight to kind of sink into the earth here. Notice the sound of your breath in your ears. And then let's reach forward with the hands here. Keep the hips really grounded. Press down into your fingertips a little bit, kind of like your hands are little spiders, okay? Fingers are your spider feet. So press down into your spider foot fingers and see if you can uh, cultivate a nice opening feeling in your armpits by moving your shoulders away from your ears and maybe even away from each other a little bit. Okay, I like to think of the fingers pressing down as the elbows lift up. And if you kind of push against the floor, you can get a great armpit opening. So adding a side stretch to this, really getting into all the tissues on the right side of the back, walk your hands out to the left. Okay, take them as far as you like because we warm the tissues of the back a bit. So take those hands as far as you like to the left, big stretches into the right side. And 
breathe. Okay, everything from that right armpit down to the hip, you might be feeling it all opening up. Feel free to stay here, or we can add a twist. So we can just change this a little bit by picking the head up and then sliding the right arm all the way under your left. So reaching the right hand out to the left, underneath that left arm. We want the right shoulder to come down, if we can get it down. And we want the right head, the right side of your head to just rest on the floor. So feel free to stay here or reach that left hand up. Maybe drop the left arm across your back and see if you can grab your left thigh, your right thigh. Nice breath here, yogis. Peel that heart open to the ceiling. Okay, ready to switch sides? Bring it back through center, and we'll just do the same thing on the other side. Okay, should feel really nice. Walk your hands as far out to the right as you like, okay? Find some great opening in that left side and just kind of dig into that for a little while. Using your fingertips is really helpful here to press the floor down and kind of press into that left hip a little more, lengthening the left side that much more. Make sure your ears are far away from your shoulders and vice versa. Okay, maybe you stay here. Maybe you want to twist on this side. This time the left arm will thread under the right. You'll try to get your left shoulder down, okay? Just set your head down too. Make sure you're comfy. And then maybe the right arm reaches up. And you can gently resist the floor with the left arm to make your twist that much twistier. Maybe that right arm drops across your back and you can grab your, uh, your left thigh. Try that. Long spine, inhale. Strong belly button to spine, exhale. Okay, work those muscles that surround your belly and your low back here, particularly on your exhale, and that will help balance and tone that low back support system. Let's unwind from this. Come back around front. And from your child's pose, uh, you are welcome to transition into any resting posture you like. I think child's pose is cool, so I'm just gonna stay here, but feel free to roll into your back or come up to a seat. Just find your blissful resting posture, please. And breathe and just be. Give up all control over your breath here. Surrender all control over your body. Practice is finished. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to undo. Everything is perfect. Everything is unfolding just as it should. Cultivate a moment of bliss here as you allow your body to release more with each breath. Allow the jaw to release. Forehead is soft, eyes are heavy, so is the tongue. Perhaps imagine a wave of softness 
kind of a radiance, a radiant softness that starts at the top of your head. A beautiful color. You imagine what color it is, you know. And that soft radiance kind of travels and diffuses down through the top of your head, down to your jaw, your neck, shoulders. Creeping down past your belly now. Down your hips, your legs, all your cells lighting up with this amazingly beautiful glow. With each breath, you become more radiant. Free of all tension. More immersed in the sensation of just being in this moment, feeling every second pass. Please continue resting like this for as long as you can. Thank you so much for joining me.